Hiya, I'm John from KWS. We are here at Bayer's Hinton Wildrest Variety Demo and I'm going to take you through some of the plots and just pass a bit of commentary on what we've seen this year and what might influence variety choices for this coming autumn. So we're going to start the Group 1s. So we've got Zayat, uh, we've got Blossom which didn't make it onto the recommended list and we've got Skyfall and Crusoe Untreated. Now what we've seen in the last couple of uh, seasons is some of the yellow rust pressure get uh, quite high and uh, Zero Zayat has taken quite a bit of rust. Uh, on this site we haven't got quite the same amount of rust as we have in the Skyfall but there is significant yellow rust in there and I think it's fair to say you know on a national level that uh, both varieties are now taking much more rust than they did do a few seasons ago. Looking forward, if you're thinking, well, the rust pressure is a little bit great, what else am I going to grow? Unfortunately, there is only a, a group, potential group two candidate in, in RLT, uh, so there's no group ones. So if you are a group one milling wheat grower, you are pretty much stuck for the next few seasons with, with Zayat, with Skyfall and with Crusto. Now, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because I think we all know that uh, Septoria is one of the bigger challenges and within these three varieties we have a very good level of Septoria resistance. You've got the 6.4 which is very very good and in the joint trials with Bayer um, here and in Callow we've seen really strong performance in reasonable Septoria conditions. Obviously Skyfall coming in just below a 6 and Crusoe in there at a 6 for Septoria. So, Whilst there may be a little bit more rust in the varieties than there has been over the last couple of years, Septoria is still one of the key things. Right, so this is the Group 2 sector. Um, what we have is, in terms of varieties, we've had KWS Lily in the market for a little while now, probably dropping out the market a bit. Brown rust was the key thing, but it did have a 6 for Septoria. Um, and yeah, looking pretty clean here. Obviously in the market for a few years now, we have had Siskin. Siskin's got a very, very strong Septoria package, a 6.6 .6 on the recommended list. Uh, and yeah, I think that's one of the key things. We know it was probably a bit weaker straw than we initially anticipated. So everybody's drilled it in the later sown slot. And I think that suits it really, really well. There's some nice buyback contracts options out there. Um, and it's quite good in terms of protein efficiency. So, you know, for me, I, I really love this sector because you can grow them like feed wheats but then still get a few quid for low grade milling which with all the biscuits and all the biscuit breakfast bars and, and all of the different ways we're consuming wheat they only need low grade milling and we haven't spent any more to grow them so for me that's a key thing. Obviously a lot of interest in Caderessic Stays um, as a uh, as a French wheat, it's probably a bit different, and I honestly feel that both Ixtays and Siskin have a beautiful place on farm together because they're both quite different. Um, Ixtays being French very, very early, um, particularly on the south coast this year, uh, T1 timing was, was a week earlier than, than usual. And I think, in my experience, when we grow wheats from different places, they can behave differently, particularly if we don't get a winter. So my keys, my tips for Ixtays, is, is obviously monitor it early and get decent fertilizer on early to maintain tiller numbers because it'll be making tiller decisions probably a bit earlier than some of our UK wheats. A lot of interest because it is an 8.1 for Septoria. Now that is key and I think there's two ways for me you use it stays. When we've got the high pressure slot from that end of September, beginning of October, you wanna, you wanna shove a variety in with really strong septoria resistance. And if you've got it stays, it'll be one of the first varieties to the combine. The other way you could use it is the way that we used to use Cordial, which was in a, a lower risk slot, later drilling, but still come with a sensible harvest date. So for those people who are looking to grow X days for um, bread making and the, some of the higher protein levels, there are a few contracts out there. And if you look on the recommended list, there is a section when grown under milling regime. And I think it does about 12.6 on there compared to Siskin's 12.8. So it's still fairly reasonable at the protein conversion, not as bad as something like Lily. So I think it's something that we'll initially look to see grown as a feed wheat. And then if there are local markets that come up, then you know it's perfectly feasible to push it for protein. Um, one of the other key traits I think with some of the varieties we've got coming to the market is the value of earliness and it's quite hard looking to on the recommended list to appreciate earliness because you see a, a naught compared to a plus one and kind of what does it mean 
actually when you've got something like X days or parking or some of the others you know these are coming in at minus figures and if you look at the dry downs from various people's data you know we are looking at something significantly early and with the spread of workload and the way that farming is at the moment we need some decent yields and early maturity to get the combine into something and second wheat performance all seed rape obviously one of the key things that we're seeing with oilseed rape is getting establishment regardless of date but getting it in and getting a, a strong crop established. Now there's either two ways you can do that, winter barley obviously or a super early maturity wheat that enables you to conceivably have a July beginning of August combine date and then be able to rock in and get some oilseed rape established. Okay so this is the group three sector and in terms of varieties it's become a bit ageist in terms of uh, uh, the variety matrix and we've had the likes of Barrel and Bassett which we've got here you know good stiff straw variety but did have a fall for Septoria uh, new introduction a few years ago was Illicit coming with a better Septoria resistance so that was a really key uh, introduction there and then we've got the new introduction last year which is KWS Firefly Firefly uh, has topped some of the early sown trials and indeed it's, it's short and stiff and very high tillering. So those looking for earlier drilling options will also have to consider septoria resistance alongside some of the other things they may have done before. And I think when you've got a 7 for septoria, something like Firefly or Saki with its slow growth habit, uh, strong standing ability and a 7 for septoria, particularly as you come further west, is going to be a key attribute. Uh, not every variety um, is, is perfect and Firefly uh, does take significant brown rust and so that does need to be catered for and it's probably taken a bit more yellow rust this year than we have seen but then a lot of varieties are taking a lot more yellow rust than we have seen. Okay so now we're in the soft feed sector and there's some good market opportunities for these varieties. You're offering some of the leading yield uh, advances on the RL and there's, I think it's dominated by these two varieties. We've got um, Skyscraper from Lima Grain, you know, fantastic all-round variety, good light land, heavy land, first wheat, second wheat. Um, has got a five for Septoria, so as you come further west, you, you question it regionally uh, how big it will be, but further east, you know, good light land performance, good late zone, you know, will take significant interest. The other nice variety for the region will be Saki. It is a plus three, so it is a bit later but I think if you're going to use its prostrate growth habit and rely on the 7th Septoria, you're going to be drilling it that bit earlier. So actually it's not going to be that, that late as a plus three could be if you, if you drilled it later. So I think, you know, as we come further west, you know, both two good varieties were drilled in the right slot. We're in the hard feed sector. Uh, and I think it's fair to say there's quite a bit of yellow rust in this sector at various parts of the season. Um, well, I think what we would say is that uh, you know, yellow rust can be quite easily controlled and when we look at uh, you know, a relatively modest input on this side then it's actually you know, cleaned up quite nicely. Realistically we've got at the top coming in last year you've got Insita and Kinetic from us. Um, Insita from Syngenta, uh, quite a big tall variety uh, quite vigorous as well, good light land performance, 6.6 .6 for Septoria, so that's quite valuable. Kinetic, short, stiff and early sums it up, but we know with the untreated, the amount of yellow rust we can see in it, it is a high input variety, but as I say, you know, on certain areas, Kinetic would still be a very, very good bet. And in the big scheme of things, Septoria is probably our challenge more than yellow rust. Gleam is probably one of the biggest, most popular varieties in the Group 4 slot uh, and it, to be fair it is a brilliant variety and something that most breeders would probably be quite happy to have in their portfolio. Um, you have ticked both boxes in terms of having midge resistance and a very high level of septoria. It's very consistent, first and second, light and heavy across years. You know, it is a very, very good all-round package. So that ticks that box. We also have then quite a lot of other material, slightly older now we have the likes of Gravities and the Kerins and they are very very good in certain situations. Now they do have fives for Septoria so instantly a lot of people are looking to, to put a line through them but we have to be careful because if we just sort of say that we're not going to grow anything above a six and a half you'll miss quite a lot of good varieties and there are culturally things we can do to lower the risk and increase that septoria resistance like drilling later. So we would argue that some of these varieties like the skyscrapers, like the carins, like the gravities have a place on farm, just the right place in the lower risk septoria slot.
So this is parking. We're at the end of the recommended list here where you know we're looking at the 102 yield level, so we've got Graham next to us. Parking didn't get recommended, uh, and it's a bit of a travesty to be honest, because we think it offers quite a unique package on farm. You've got a good yield level, but you've got incredibly stiff straw, and you've got super, super early maturity. A lot of people were looking at it as a Grafton replacement, but Grafton came up and did that, whereas parking, a bit like a Skyfall or a Kerrin, is a lot more vigorous, so it will offer more black grass competition. You can see from the plot that it's quite full. Grafton always needed a seed rate twist because it used to drop a lot of tillers. Parking doesn't, so it doesn't require the extra seed element that the Grafton did. So whilst it's not on the recommended list, we do feel that parking offers quite a lot to farmers in terms of if you've got fertility, you want stiff straw uh, and you want super early harvest. We should say though with the early drilling that it is a five and a half for Septoria. So that is going to need looking after on the fungicide spend. You know, it's not like a Firefly or a Saki with a seven, which might be slightly less risky. But if you want stiff straw, super early maturity, then, then parking is unique on the recommended list. So this is dear old Costello. Uh, we have seen the seed acreage start to drop a little bit in recent years. And I think we're losing, you know, we'd lose something if we did let it go. We have got a good six for Septoria. It is incredibly stiff and very easy to manage with good yellow rust. And just because it's not at that end does not mean that it's not a great variety on farm. And I think something like Costello, as well as being a good parent, which you've seen with some of the other material, is, is the new Diego in terms of a nice farmer friendly variety. So we haven't spent too much time talking about candidates and with good reason. They're interesting to look at, but this year, is the make or break year. Their data set doubles. Generally speaking, there's around about 15 NL1 variety trials, 15 NL2. And then when it comes to this recommended list year, there's 30 trials. So whilst we probably have a good idea about them, we really have to wait for this year to be really sure because things can change. And there is some good material in here. There's some very, very good septoria resistance and some really nice growth habits. And we're between two varieties here in the hard for sector that are quite different, um, offer something different to stuff we've already got. So it's worth keeping an eye on. You've got Clipper here, which is a, a stick cross, and we've got a Crispin cross here in Cranium. Both have quite vigorous growth habits and actually look really good. You know, you've got good levels of septoria and good levels of rust resistance as well. So I'd say there's a lot of candidates out there. Let's see what happens this year, but there's some good, interesting stuff to, to have a look at next autumn uh, when we get out in the fields and have a look at open days.